Legend of Total War here, and welcome to my Medieval 2 Total War Exploit Guide. I'll be covering all the major exploits I know in this video. Before we begin, let me explain the difference between an exploit and a cheat. An exploit is a move or trick that gives a benefit that under normal circumstances wouldn't be achievable. This is done through tricking the game mechanics and through faults in the programming. A cheat is an outright code that gives an instant result, usually inputted into the console commands. Exploit number one, the unlimited boat movement. For this exploit, you need a fleet with at least two ships and an army on Crusade or Jihad. As you can see, the fleet whilst not on Jihad can't move very far. The army can only move the regular amount as well. When I put the army on the fleet, the ship can move twice as far, but this is nothing unusual. In order to trigger this glitch, you need to be on the coast and then select the entire army. Don't disembark. What you want to do instead is select something to attack. However, I don't want them going all the way there because they won't be able to get back on the boat. So I'm going to press backspace as soon as they get off. This action has completely messed with the ship's movement and now they all have unlimited. I can take them all the way to Africa and back at no cost. This glitch is great if you want your navy to crush every enemy fleet, but what I really want is to transport the army to anywhere on the map. I'll put them back on the fleet and we can see that the boat's movement has returned to the regular Jihad speed. To get around this, we have to select every ship unit card and then move them just one space. This action has disregarded the army's movement so that it's only looking for the ships. Now we can take them anywhere. However, if we stop, the glitch will end. You can't disembark units that have traveled that far either. If you're blockaded by an enemy ship, you'll be stuck as well. Exploit number two. The Timeout Assault Win In this section I'll show you how to win an assault with inferior troops and take zero casualties. You must be up against a garrison of melee only, but preferably not too many though. This city only has a general's bodyguard and I only have two units of peasants. The enemy general can't fight on the walls, so he'll move back to the town square. All I have to do is get my peasants inside the city at this stage. the walls with their ladders. The Lord is with us today. We have captured the enemy's walls. If I stack my peasants around the edge of the town square, I can trigger the countdown and the enemy will stay put. You need four times as many troops as the enemies inside the town square to trigger it. Then you simply wait it out. Our men are in command of the city. My lord, we have lost control of this city. Victory is ours! And there you have it! No casualties! Exploit number 3 Agent Squashing 
In this section, I'll show you how to kill enemy agents using military units. I'm going to kill that Venetian diplomat. All I have to do is send one unit to each of the tile that borders the diplomat so that he has nowhere to move. Doing this in restrictive locations like mountains is easier than open plains because you need less units to pull it off. Are you looking to negotiate with us? Once my men are in position, I send a final unit to land in the same tile as the diplomat. Since he cannot retreat to any tile, he is killed. You cannot kill your own agents with this technique. Exploit number 4. The Merchant Fort. There are three tradable resources near Nuremberg, but iron is the most valuable. I have seven merchants, so under normal circumstances, some will be without work. However, there is a way to get all of them on a single resource. Simply get a general and sit him on the desired resource and build a fort. Once he's done that, you don't need him anymore, so take him out. As you can see, I have no income from merchants at the moment. I'll select a merchant and hover over the fort. It says I will make 8 florins, and my income has increased accordingly. Now I'll take another merchant and hover over the fort. This one will make 10 florins per turn, so I'll send him in. Now my merchant income is 18, which is the sum of both merchants. I'll send the other 5 merchants there, and my income now incorporates them all. This resource is pretty bad, but if you did this on gold or ivory in Timbuktu, you could make a fortune. Exploit number 5. The Pseudo Random Chance Manipulation. In this section, I'll explain how to exploit situation where random chance is involved. I have a small army besieging Hamburg. My auto-resolving chances of victory could go either way. However, we can guarantee success. Simply quick save before making the attack and then go ahead with it. Closing on the Reich's enemies. We are beaten. Regroup. Well, I was defeated, but that's okay. I'll just quick load and try again. Every time you use quick save, the random chance variable saved is changed. When you load, you won't get the same results. Now let's give this another go, but before we attack, it's best to quick save again. Kaiser! Yeah, Kaiser! Marching to battle! Another defeat. However, the results were different. I'll just load and try again. Orders, Kaiser! We shall defeat them for you, my Kaiser! And there's the victory. This method won't give you victory over unbeatable battles, but it can help make the difference between evenly matched ones. The Reich has conquered. Now we can use the same method to ensure an agent's success. This spy has a 38% chance of entering the city. Before I attempt to get inside, I'll need to quick save. And he died. This isn't the result I wanted, so it's time to reload and try again. Let's see if luck is on my side this time. Nope, still failed. And on the third try, he manages to get inside. This technique will work on any agent, and even if the odds are 5%, it really just depends on how long you want to spend reloading. Now we can even use this method to deter a revolution. Constantinople has 30% public order and has already spent one turn rioting. There's nothing I can do to prevent a riot, but I can hold back a revolt. Before ending the turn, I'll quick save. Make up, men. We rest 
The city revolted, so I'll reload. Save again, then end turn. They kicked me out again. And I'll try a third time. The city didn't revolt, but the riot caused my faction leader to die. This isn't an ideal result, so I'll reload again. And I'll just keep trying until I get the acceptable result. Okay, this is unusually bad luck. A thing to note is that the lower the public order, the less chance of success you will have. So don't think that you can just max out the taxes and get away with it. Sometimes this requires a lot of patience. However, keeping the city in my hands saves me more time than retaking it after it has revolted. And finally, the city remains under my control and my faction leader lives. Overall, it's probably best you just try keep your cities in good order in the first place. Exploit number 6. The Sally Out Draw Glitch. This glitch is a big one. I'll show you how to always knock back a Sally Out regardless of how small your army is and how big the enemy is. As you can see, I besieged Paris, and my force is pitiful in comparison. But I'm not going to lose a single man. I'll end the turn and bring on the Sally out. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't stand a chance. Now I simply click the manual resolve. Keep an eye on that loading bar. This doesn't need to be timed perfectly, but the faster you do it, the better the chances it will work. As soon as the screen fades in, press escape and exit the battle. It'll say that you'll lose, but actually it'll be a draw. This is because all enemy units are still inside the city. If they open the city gate, it won't work. You might think that this wasn't such a big deal, but if you do this enough times, you'll starve the enemy out entirely. They can only sally out once per turn. For this instance, I'll need to do this five more times. Keep in mind that if your army is attacked from an army outside the city, this technique will not work, so try keep them safe in that regard. It's actually quite easy, you just need to be alert. Only four more to go. Three more. Side Two more. Today. Neither we nor our enemy won this day. Only the crows will feast tonight. As you can see, there's just one more to go. If I mess this up, I'll have to start again. We have chosen the time and place. Now let us choose triumph. Neither we, nor our enemy won this day. Only the crows will... And that's the end of them. They've been completely starved out and they couldn't kill a single one of my troops. This is probably the most dodgy exploit I know. I will never use this in a campaign challenge. Exploit number seven. Attacking factions of the same religion on crusade or jihad. In this example, I will use a crusading army to take on Milan, who are still in good favour with the Pope. The first thing I need to do is call a crusade. It doesn't matter who gets it called on. Oh, 
Now I'll get my army and join the crusade. I'm afraid I cannot. I need to march my army right up to Milan. However, you'll notice that I can't attack it just yet. If only one unit in the army is not technically on crusade, you can attack. I'll bring a single unit of militia from Bologna into the army. Since it's not on crusade, I can attack and the rest of the army joins in. We have some besieged, mein Kaiser. Kaiser! However, that isn't the end of it. If I skip to the next turn, the militia unit has joined the crusade now and I can't assault Milan. I could bring another unit from Bologna in to do it, but there is another way as well. All I need to do is tell my general to leave the crusade. The other units will still remain on crusade. After the battle, I can simply rejoin, provided I wasn't excommunicated. Glory to the Reich! Honor and glory to the Reich! And honor, Kaiser! Your will! You'll notice I can continue to hit Milanese armies. Keep in mind that whilst the general isn't on crusade, his movement doesn't get the bonus, and he may end up being the slowest unit you've got if you aren't careful. Exploit number 8. Units never desert. Have you ever been on a crusade to a target that was so far away, only to have many of your units desert despite your best efforts to get them there quickly? Well, you can forget about that from now on. This simple exploit will guarantee you won't lose men to desertion even if you go in the opposite direction of the crusade target. The game is coded so that after being on crusade for more than one turn it is possible to lose men to desertion. However, you can simply leave the crusade and rejoin it provided the crusade is less than 10 turns old and refresh the timer. That means for the first 10 turns you won't lose any troops to desertion. Our settlement is under threat, Kaiser. We are besieged. As you can see, despite my Crusader army doing nothing, they aren't losing any men to desertion. Exploit number 9. General with quadruple movement. In order to get a general with quadruple movement, you have to be on Crusade or Jihad and preferably have an army comprised entirely of cavalry. You also need an enemy to attack. The closer they are to your starting position, the better. So I'll get a Jihad going and join that army up. Now before I do anything, I need to take that general out of the army. It's okay if he participates in the battle, but so long as he's only reinforcing. How may I serve, Sultan? You can see that my cavalry now have two times their normal movement because of the Jihad. I then need to win this battle and get a man of the hour. The new general will have the same movement as the cavalry, even though he's technically not on jihad. So when we put him on jihad, his already doubled movement is doubled again. Only the new general will be affected and it will only last one turn. Next turn he'll move at a normal speed. Exploit number 10. Recruitment Replenishment Glitch In this section I'll show you how to increase your recruitment pool to as many units as you want. You need to have two of the same units that you want to boost, and they need to be retrainable at the city or castle that you are in. One of them needs to have taken no casualties, and the other needs to have taken at least one. 
They also need to not have armor upgrades and the city needs to have the necessary armory in order to upgrade them. This ensures that the unit with full troops can be retrained. The first step is to put the fresh unit into the recruitment slot. Then drag that unit card over to the weakened battalion and transfer all the units you can over to it. Now simply take that unit out of retraining. With this simple action I have added 73 desert cavalry into the recruitment pool. It isn't noticeable in the form of a new recruit, but you'll see that the time until the next unit arrives has been reduced from 2 to 1. The programming forgets how many troops were in retraining to begin with and will always add the difference when deselected. Since I can repeat the step as many times as I want now, I can effectively add hundreds of troops to the pool. Sultan. How may I serve, Sultan? Naam. How may I serve, Sultan? In just a few seconds, I increase the desert cavalry pool to 12. Given enough time, you can increase it to hundreds. Thanks for watching my exploit guide. I hope it hasn't totally ruined the game for you. Feel free to message me glitches I may have missed, but please don't bother me with minor ones.